This video is rated G for gas. Holy sh! What is up with the French? Arturia, Embodme, Eowave, Kiviak, Jouet, audio thingies. Just like the Italians and their obsession with powerful, huge engines and the color red, the French have become true visionaries in all that synthesizers, MIDI controllers, and MP is concerned. And today's featured synth is no exception. Je ne sais pas que ce qu'ils nourrissent les enfants en France, mais quoi que ce soit, ça marche très bien. You'll excuse my French. In today's video, I want to tell you about a synth that might make you second guess all your preconceived ideas about what a budget synth can do, how it can sound, and just how fun it can be when an extremely complex machine is presented in an extremely simple way. If you're already subscribed, huge welcome back. If this is your first time here, hi, welcome to the Midlight Synthesis. Let's get started. This is the Audio Thingies Micro Monster 2, a 12 voice by Timbrel MPE compatible digital synthesizer that fits in your pocket and get this it costs less than $300 if you can find it that is because they're never in stock I'd heard about this synth multiple times in whispers and dark corners of the synth world always referred to with great admiration and respect but few people had actually seen one firsthand like some sort of fabled synth Sasquatch so when I saw one come out on the secondhand market I knew I had to get it and give it a try well, I bought it, and after using it non-stop since then, to say it absolutely destroyed my expectations would be a huge understatement. So let's start off with the most important thing, the sound. I'm sorry if I sound like a synth snob, but this thing has no right sounding this good in this price bracket. As soon as I turned it on, I was greeted with an amazing set of patches that evoke some of my best musical memories of the 90s and early 2000s. It is absolutely and unashamedly digital in the best of ways, and whether or not that's a good or a bad thing for you, the Micro Monster 2 has something that many greater synths can lack. In one word, character. Making up that sound are its 12 voices of polyphony. No paraphony shenanigans or monkey business going on here. Every voice has its own filter envelopes, amp, everything, the works. Now what's truly staggering about a hardware synth in this price and this size is that you can use the 12 voices of one patch or by Timberly, stack them up together and play six voices in combi mode or play both patches independently on different MIDI channels. You can even do keyboard splits. Now, to give you an idea of how crazy that is, the only other hardware synth in my studio right now that can do that is my Roland Phantom for just a little over 3,000 bucks more than the Micro Monster. The only other by Trimble synth that I can think of that comes even close in price is the Hydra synth, and that has eight voices. If any of you out there know of another budget by Trimble synth, please let me know in the comments. I'd really love to know. However, what makes this synth particularly useful is that that bitembrality is coupled with its very tiny footprint. I can easily see myself making entire songs just using this, my Octatrack, and the Ocos, for example. Making up each voice are three oscillators. They can all do traditional analog type waveforms, but with a twist. Save for the sine wave, all of the other analog type oscillators have some form of wave shaping. You have things like triangle to square and pretty much everything in between, two types of super saws, just to name a few.
the MicroMonster can even do FM synthesis, where oscillator 1 is modulated by oscillator 3, and oscillators 2 and 3 have 8 wavetables with 64 available slices each. As for filters, you get 4 low pass filters with full resonance compensation, and that means that you won't lose any of that low end when you crank up the resonance, like can happen in a much more expensive Moog. 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 You also get a filter character parameter that can be soft, mild, hard, and mean, which is by default. After all, this thing is called the monster. A little one, but still. The character parameter affects the resonance behavior, and I think it might be responsible for what I mentioned earlier about this thing having a personality. You also have a dry parameter to add some of the grit and dirt to the sound, as well as a master mix or program output level. That comes in really handy in combi and by timbre mode to adjust the levels of the two patches that are coming out the stereo. The MicroMonster has three ADSR type envelopes per voice. Envelope 1 goes to amplitude, envelope 2 goes to the filter, and envelope 3 is free. However, they are absolutely assignable via the mod matrix. It also has three LFOs per voice that are freely assignable as well. The mod matrix allows for 10 slots of modulation, which you can access on the dedicated mod matrix section and assign the source, destination, and positive or negative values of modulation. The MicroMonster also has an arpeggiator, which is quite special in its own right and reminds me a lot of the vector synth arpeggiator. You have the option of tweaking 16 notes of that arpeggio, where you can either add a rest, a tie, note octave up or down, choose a specific note on that chord, or just play the entire chord. This is really useful for the style which comes naturally to the MicroMonster, which is reminiscent of that techno ravey vibe of the 2000s. As for the effects, you have chorus, delay, and reverb, independently assignable to program A and program B. As for the quality of those effects, the chorus, nothing to write home about. The delay, pretty good. Reverb, ooh la la. <laughs> As for the voicings themselves, the MicroMonster has a few tricks up its sleeve. You can have mono, legato, modern, and vintage mode, as well as voice unison. And in this last mode, you can select up to one, two, three, or six voices played in unison. Each of these voices can be spread out in the stereo field in diffuse mode, or put more in the center in balance mode. You can also choose the stereo spread amount, as well as detune them. Other options include adjusting the velocity sensitivity of the filter and the amp envelope, and resetting the envelopes or the oscillators to zero, which can be very useful depending on what type of oscillator and the music that you're making. Now, beyond just being technically versatile, what makes the MicroMonster 2 really useful is that it stands out without being overwhelming, making it fit snugly into a mix wherever you want to put it. The pads and strings are lush and brimming with emotion. You really get caught up in them. The leads are beautiful, and they can be very well behaved or extremely aggressive if you want them to be. The fake and intentionally digital pianos and organs are some of my favorites out there. I would certainly favor this synth for large soundscapes and huge chords, making good use of its 12 voices. The bass sounds are a bit hit and miss, though. There are certainly many usable basses in here, but it wouldn't be my go-to bass synth, as in the lower ranges, it can get a bit ugly. Hey there, if you're enjoying this video, would you mind hitting that like button down there? It really helps the video reach more people and keeps this channel growing so I can make more of these. Thanks. I think that the highest praise I can really give the sounds of the MicroMonster is that while none of the presets might exactly blow your brains out, they're almost all actually usable in a song, and that's pretty rare. It's kind of that workhorse synth that I can see myself using in pretty much any song I make. Like, I'm sure I can find a place for it where it's gonna lift up the whole thing. And that's something that I can really appreciate. The interface. I'm a huge stickler for enjoyable interfaces, and it's my most important parameter after the actual sound of a synth. In the MicroMonster 2, I was worried that there would be a lot of menu diving and hidden features locked behind weird and convoluted button combos, as is very common with these pedal-type synths, but I couldn't have been more wrong. 
save for just a few sections like the system settings pages, you get direct access to the important stuff, the, uh, the buttons and the knobs on the front panel, and the menu diving is mercifully kept to a minimum. The layout is smart and fast, and you can really get familiar with the inner workings of the synth surprisingly fast. What makes it very quick to understand and learn is that all the menus are laid out in a very logical order from left to right, with very large and readable labels under the buttons. I'm not a very big fan of these types of screens, especially when abbreviations are involved. <coughs> Octatrack! But the two rows on the MicroMonster manage to deliver all the necessary information in a mostly painless fashion. Aside from its four screen-related knobs, the MicroMonster also managed to fit in three macro knobs, which are freely assignable, but come pre-assigned to filter, resonance, and mod knob. This gives you immediate access to seven parameters on the fly, making it extremely fun and very usable in a live situation as well. Programming sounds is easy and fast, and I always find the parameter that I'm looking for without too much fuss, which has been great for my creativity. And I have to tip my hat to audio thingies for delivering so much sound design capabilities in such a minimalistic package. I've tried as much as possible to avoid saying for the price in this video, and that's because I think that the MicroMonster is an absolute gem, and not just for the price. I would have happily paid much more for this in a heartbeat. Sure, there are places where savings can be seen, like the buttons on the front panel, which are very wobbly and don't look very premium, but they get the job done just fine. The knobs, while not Moog level good, have a nice feel and resistance to them, and the screen does its job. Plus, the thing comes wrapped up in a nice metal enclosure, which I actually prefer over the plastics that other synth companies have started to favor. Of course, there are other sacrifices that were made in the name of portability, like TRS MIDI and Audio Out, but they aren't deal breakers, and also, they become so common now that I own a bunch of breakout cables, so... It's really a non-issue at this point. What might be a bigger issue though, is that this thing has no separate power input. You power it through USB, either through one of those power adapters like on your cell phone, or direct into a computer or to a USB hub. The problem with the latter option though, is that it makes a lot of ground noise if you plug it into a computer or a USB hub. So for those of you thinking of powering and controlling direct to USB from your computer, be prepared to invest in a special isolation cable so that noise doesn't give you any issues. So who is the MicroMonster 2 for? Funnily enough, despite its entry-level price, I'd actually recommend this more for an intermediate or advanced synth enthusiast than a complete beginner. A couple of reasons why. First, this is a bi-timbral MPE compatible synth. To use it to its full potential, you'd need an MPE MIDI controller. Preferably one that can do two channels at the same time if you want to play both patches simultaneously. I've been using my Embodomy E-Ray Touch for that purpose, but it's not exactly an entry-level MIDI controller. I've also used it with the Jue to take advantage of the MPE, but even then I can only really use it in combi or mono timbre mode. In any case, if you factor in a fully capable controller into the purchase, it's not so entry-level anymore. The second reason I think a more experienced synthesis will get more out of it is that while the interface is very logical and well laid out, I am aware that I was only able to fully grasp it this quickly due to my own level of experience. If I was a beginner that's just getting to grips with the concepts of things like LFOs and envelopes, I'd probably struggle with the MicroMonster as there's no real visual feedback to the changes you're making. Also for beginners, I feel that there's a huge benefit in getting synths with dedicated knobs and sections dedicated to each part so you get a better understanding of how things work. All comparisons aside, the MicroMonster 2 has been a complete revelation, a breath of fresh air I desperately needed when I was feeling uninspired and creatively constipated. Its beautiful sounds coupled with its simple and playful nature have completely won me over and I have to say, it's the best 300 bucks I've spent in a while. If you ever spot one out there in the wild, don't think twice, you won't regret it. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support my channel, please consider joining my Patreon community and my Discord, where you'll find some of the nicest people in the synthverse. Also, check out my affiliate links down below, where you can buy yourself a brand new synth or MIDI controller, while also actively contributing to the channel so I can keep making videos just like this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful, or at least entertaining. Have a great week. I'll see you next time.